Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to the Brain Shakers Academy. Brave Alice Tears here. In today's session, we're going to be discussing about the formation of the placenta, which is just a temporal structure or organ that is created during the stage of pregnancy to act as an interplay between the growing fetus and the mother, and also to ensure that there is no mixing of the baby's blood and the mother's blood. Now, let's look at what happens in the process of placenta or the formation of the placenta. So we also know that after fertilization has occurred, around the seventh day or so, the blastocyst is going to be in the uterine lining. It would have already come into the uterus. And as the blastocyst comes into the uterus, it has a lining around it, which we call the trophoblastic layer. Now, I have done a video on fertilization and embryology. So for you to be able to uh, understand some of the terminologies that we look at here. It is also important to just quickly look at that particular video on fertilization and embryology, and you can find it on the Brain Shakers Academy. Now, once the blastocyst has come into the uterine lining, what happens now is that that blastocyst will try and embed itself straight into the endometrium and completely bury itself. Now, as it is burying itself, you have the trophoblastic layer. Now, importantly, with the trophoblastic layer, you have two main layers, one which is the cytotrophoblast, and the second one is the syncytial trophoblast. Now, the cytotrophoblast is the one that is inside, and then on the outside you have a layer that we call the syncytial trophoblast. Now, the syncytial trophoblast is the one that is going to come into contact with the endometrial lining. Now, as it comes into contact with the endometrial lining, there will be projections that are going to form from this syncytial trophoblast. Okay, so the projections that are going to form from this layer is what we are calling the villi. And these are the projections that I am talking about. So these projections will be covered with the layer of the syncytial trophoblast, with another layer of the cytotrophoblast inside. And within these same villi, you'll find that now there will be blood vessels that will emanate, which we'll call the fetal arterioles and the fetal venues that will then have have the capillaries to come and do uh, uh, perform the function of absorption once the whole process has been finalized. Now, what is happening is that the projections that are going to emanate from here, let's take for instance, you have a projection here, which we are calling the villi. This projection now is going to attach itself to the spiral arteries, or it is going to look for the spiral arteries. So normally you have arteries that are like this, that is in the maternal decidua. So within these spiral arteries, these syncytial trophoblasts come and embed those spiral arteries. As they embed those spiral arteries, they will convert them from being spiral into funnel shaped like this into funnel-shaped arteries so that they can then supply more blood to the area. So the area that the blastocyst is going to come into contact with, that is the area of the uterus it is going to come into contact with, will be an area that contains more blood supply. And that area then is going to be called as the decidua basalis. So if you look at this particular diagram here, you have this placenta having formed here. Why? Because the projections or the villi that emanated from the syncytia trophoblast looked for an area that has more blood supply. And if this is the area that has more blood supply, then the area where they are going to attach and where the placenta will then develop and form will be called the decidua basalis. Okay, so what we have here now is called the decidua basalis, which is this layer down here. So you have the decidua basalis. Now, since you have your decidua basalis here, what is then going to happen is that the area that is going to be around the uh, fetus as it continues to grow is what is going to be called the decidua capsularis. Okay, so that will be called the capsularis. 
okay and around the rest of the uterus what is then going to uh, remain is going to be called the decidua parietalis also known as the decidua vera okay we'll come back to these after we have finished uh, around here now what happens is that these villi are then going to continue to embed those spiral arteries so that more blood supply is going to come into the area. And as they continue to embed into the um, maternal blood supply, what is also going to happen is that some of the villi are going to anchor and attach to the endometrium. And as they anchor and attach to the endometrium, those villi now become what are known as an anchoring villi. Now, some of the villi are not going to anchor into the endometrium and will remain floating where the blood supply continues to come, where you have formed a lake of maternal blood supply by those penetrating uh, villi. So there will be blood here and some of those villi will keep on floating and where they are floating it allows them then to absorb the relevant nutrients and oxygen that will then be channeled through the vein to take to the fetus for development and growth. So these villi that are not attaching to the endometrium and are floating within that lake of maternal blood are what we refer to as the nutritive villi because their main role and function is to absorb nutrients and the glucose or the oxygen and then send the oxygen and nutrients back to the fetus so that the fetus can then grow. And in the same vein, again, once everything has been utilized by the fetus, the fetus will excrete its waste through the umbilical arteries back to the villi again. And then you have the veins here, which are the maternal veins, which are the endometrial veins. Now these endometrial veins again will get that, send it into maternal circulation, maternal circulation then processes it, reoxygenates it, and then brings back oxygenated blood again through the endometrium arteries. Okay, so every villi that forms has layers that surround it. So the villi and the layers that surround it is then going to be separated from another villi by an intervillous space and you also have a placental septum. Now these placental septums that you see and then a villi in between surrounded by its layer that is you have the chorion, uh, the chorionic mesoderm, you have the cytotrophoblast and you have the syncytial trophoblast as well. Then this forms what is referred to as a cotyledon. Okay so the area that is in attachment the area or the part of the chorionic villi or the um, the um, the cytotrophoblast and the syncytial trophoblast that is in attachment to the endometrium is then now going to be called as the chorion frondosum. Now, the chorion frondosum is then what goes on to develop as the placenta. So this is what is going to become the placenta that we are seeing today here. Now, as you go out towards the ends here, you will see that you still have the decidua basalis here. And then you have this umbilical cord covered in a layer. This layer is going to be the amniotic uh, lining. And the amniotic lining, just in between here, between the amniotic lining and the decidua basalis, you will have a capsularis, what we will cover, first and foremost, the developing uh, fetus within there. And after what covers the fetus, you have another layer that is remaining on the uterus, meaning that as the fetus in here continues to grow, it will have the capsularis around it. By the 27th or 28th week, the capsularis now would have been pushed towards the parietaris or the decidua vera, and then they become one layer. So you would have now the fetus growing and taking up the entire space of the uterus. Now, once all this has then been uh, formed, the coming together of the capsularis and the parietaris, so the capsularis is going to be lined obviously by the amniotic line. And so once the capsularis comes into contact with the parietaris, and then they will form what is now going to become the chorionic 
membrane. That is why the chorion is usually outside and in attachment to the uterus and then the amnion or the amniotic membrane is then going to be the one that is closest to the developing fetus. So it is the penetration of the villi into the maternal decidua to get the blood to get the nutrients and then be able to send them over to the fetus for development and once the fetus has utilized it and then it sends it over back to the placenta and so the placenta forms now an interplay between the maternal circulation and the fetal circulation by bringing in blood that can be assimilated or absorbed into the fetal circulation. Now having said that the blood flow that comes into the placenta is going to be moving at a slower pace. Why? This is to allow the villi to be able to absorb the nutrients and the oxygen. Now, what is going to happen for the maternal circulation not to come into contact with the fetal circulation? So you will have a villi here, and within the villi here that has been created, remember we said that the villi will only be formed because of that projection that forms out of the syncytial trophoblast. So on top you have a syncytial trophoblastic layer, so you have a layer on top of the villi, which is the syncytial trophoblastic layer. Then underneath it you have another layer which we are going to call the cytotrophoblastic layer. And after the cytotrophoblastic layer then you have the stem villus itself. You have the stem villus itself. And then after the stem villus then you have now the single celled or uh, layer of fetal blood vessels, which is the fetal venues and the fetal arterioles that forms then uh, the capillaries. So you're going to have your blood vessel in there. So it is these four layers now that form that are going to make it impossible for the maternal circulation to come into contact with the fetal circulation. However, there are certain chances when the villi has been damaged, and this could happen in conditions such as diabetes mellitus, in hypertensive uh, cases, in also cases such as uh, heavy smoking as well, they could alter the uh, functionality of the villi. Then the chances of fetal maternal hemorrhage then increases and that is why even when you have trauma there are chances that you could also cause damage to the villi and that's why those that are recess negative mothers and they have a positive predicted um, um, uh, baby then they may end up receiving what you call an anti-D immunoglobulin just to help in preventing them from developing any antibodies for that particular pregnancy and also in a successful um, uh, pregnancy in succeeding pregnancies as well. So the villi plays a key role in ensuring that you get through to the endometrium and to the richer or well-nourished uh, environment for this particular fetus to continue the process of growth. So the placenta now forms the a temporal uh, structure that is going to play key role in the supply of nutrients to the fetus. So it is dependent on how far these anchoring villi are going to go that will then determine on what type of a placenta you have. So sometimes a placenta may become a little bit difficult to remove or deliver. That means that the placenta or the anchoring villi have gone a little bit far or further than the endometrium. Now I look at uh, those in a different uh, and separate video that is the placenta accreta, the placenta increta and the placenta uh, percreta as well. So basically that is what happens in the formation of the placenta and the placenta plays a key role and major role in determining also the outcome of uh, pregnancy. Any placenta is sufficient causing condition then has the capacity to cause early termination of pregnancy. Now this is the summary basically of what happens in the formation of the placenta and if you have liked this video or found it a little bit helpful in understanding what happens in the formation of the placenta don't forget to uh, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to share as much as possible, drop me comments in the comment section I would like to hear what you think about it and also don't don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel which is Brain Shakers Academy and as always thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.